Hey guys, Blaze here with West Coast Wing Foil. In this video, I'm gonna share my experience taking my foil, board, and wing with me on an airplane and share the best way to prepare your gear for the journey. Let's get into it. I recently went on a trip to Maui and decided to bring my foil gear with me uh, so I could foil without having to rent when I was over there. Carbon foil boards can be extremely fragile when it comes to banging against hard, sharp objects, so I was really worried that I'd show up in Maui to a broken wing board that I couldn't use. Airlines are notoriously bad at handling luggage, and they rarely compensate you for damaged sports equipment. When I traveled to Japan on a snowboarding trip, uh, I had a metal binding that got completely crushed on the flight over, even though it was packed in a padded snowboard bag. So this time around, I wanted to make sure that my wingboard was completely safe, and I thought I'd share with you how I did it. The first key thing that you need with your board for when you're traveling is a proper travel bag. After some extensive searching, I found this Mystic Travel Series wing foil bag. This bag is great, well padded, and has lots of extra volume, and it's got great tightening straps so that you can make sure everything is super secure and not bouncing around in your bag. It's designed to hold multiple wing boards, which gives you lots of extra room for adding padding while you're traveling. I also was able to put my foil, wing, and some accessories all in the same bag for transit, which makes it a lot easier than dealing with multiple bags. My board is four feet, 11 inches, and I got the five, one bag option. That gave me enough buffer around the edges for, to add extra padding, but it wasn't too bulky. Once you have the bag, the other key item to pick up is the packaging bubble wrap. I bought two pretty big rolls, and I also grabbed a few cardboard boxes for extra protection. I had these two additional foam noodles, which I use on my car crossovers when I put my board on my roof, that also became really handy for extra protection on the front and back of my board. These were also really useful when I arrived at my destination because I used them on the roof racks that were on the rental car that I had. The first thing that I did was protect the nose and tail. I put the foam noodles on each of the edges and used some packaging tape to keep it all in place. I then wrapped the whole board with bubble wrap and did some reinforcing on the edges which are most susceptible to damage. One thing that you wanna be aware of is how much room that you have to work with depending on your bag size. If you don't have a lot of room on the edges of your bag, be careful not to overdo it on the padding because your board package simply won't fit. Once my board was fully wrapped, I pr placed cardboard from a cut open box on each side of the board for extra protection. Adding the cardboard helps distribute the pressure from concentrated blows and in combination with the bubble wrap is a pretty strong package sandwich. Once the board and the cardboard were in place, I locked them down with these handy internal straps that come with the Mystic bag. The Mystic travel bag comes with an internal separator that actually Velcros apart. I added my foil broken down into front wing, rear wing, and fuselage, Velcroed that together, and then put my mast on the outside, making sure that I had some protection between the base plate of the mast and my board. I secured the mast and then it was time to add my hand wing. I removed it from the wing bag and just did the old fashioned sleeping bag stuff, trying to distribute it as, across as much of the bag as possible. The nice thing about the wing is that you can pack it into all the additional spaces within your bag so it packs down nice and small and allows you to fill those open gaps to prevent anything from bouncing around. Once that was in, I checked to make sure that I could zip the whole package closed, and then after getting some of the excess air out of the bag, I tried to stuff more of my gear into it. I managed to fit my impact vest and helmet in the bag itself, and that was basically 105% saturated. It was also weighing pretty heavy, so even if I could, I don't think I'd add any additional weight to that bag. If you're bringing your board with you overseas, one key thing to pack is roof straps. If you're renting a car, some places do have roof, roof straps that they're gonna include, but it's nice to have your own straps when you arrive at your destination. If you're looking for some good travel straps, make sure to check out westcoastwingfoil.com where we have our suggested pair that we recommend for traveling with your wingboard. Once I had everything in, I made sure to tighten each of the external fastening straps. One key thing with packaging anything fragile is to make sure it doesn't move an inch. Anything that's rattling around or banging inside your bag can actually cause more damage than external forces. And that's it. 
Packing the bag once I had everything, it took me about 30 minutes. I had a bit of a scare at the airport because it just barely fit through one of the security oversized conveyors. Um, but my board arrived in good shape and I got out and I got some awesome riding sessions in while I was there. destination and are unpacking your board, make sure to keep your bubble wrap organized so that you can easily rewrap your board on the way home. I actually labeled everything with different pieces that I that I cut uh, to make it really easy for the rewrap. And that's it guys, I hope this video helps you take care of your precious cargo uh, and allows you to shred wherever it is that you're headed. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for more Wingfoil videos to come.